book twelve chapter four of the adventures of gil blas of santillane by alain rene lesage translated by tobias smollett this librivox recording is in the public domain book twelve chapter four santillane in a new office my feelings were all alive to lucretia's ill fate and my own infamy in having contributed to it the royal wants of the lover were no excuse for my taking the post of cheapener and i determined to resign the staff of office in that department entreating the minister to employ me in some other he was charmed with my nice sense of honour and promised to comply with my scruples laying open his inmost heart in the following speech some years before i was in office chance threw me across a lady of such shape and beauty as induced me to trace her home i learned that she was a genoese by name donna margarita spinola supporting herself at madrid on the income arising from her beauty it was reported that don francisco de Valazar, an officer about the court a rich man an old man and a married man laid out his money very freely on this hazardous speculation these rumours ought to have deterred me but they only whetted my desires to share with valleazar to gain my end i had recourse to a female broker of tenderness who adjusted the terms of a private interview with the genoese and the price current being settled the traffic was frequently repeated it was an open market for my rival and me or possibly for many other bidders let that be as it may a choice boy was in the fullness of time produced to the club and the mother complimented every member individually in private with the credit but we were each of us too modest to acknowledge a bantling which had so probable a claim upon a better father so that the genoese was compelled to maintain him on the profits of her profession this she did for eighteen years and dying at the end of that period has left her son without a farthing and what is worse without an idea or an accomplishment such continued his lordship is the confidence i meant to repose in you and i shall now lay open the great design i have formed to draw this unfortunate child from his obscurity reverse the colour of his fate raise him to the highest honours and acknowledge him as my son at so extravagant a project it was impossible not to be open-mouthed what sir exclaimed i can your excellency have adopted so strange a resolution excuse my freedom but my zeal cannot restrain itself you will be of my mind replied he with eagerness when i shall have explained to you my motives i have no mind that my estates should descend in the collateral line you will tell me that i am not so old as to despair of having children by madame d'olivares but every one is best judge of his own condition know therefore that there is not a receipt in the whole extent of chemistry which i have not tried but without effect to appear once again in the character of a father wherefore since fortune stepping in to cover the defects of nature presents me with a child whose parent after all i may actually be he is mine by adoption that is a settled point when i found the minister determined i no longer argued against his resolution as knowing him to be a man who would rather do a foolish act of his own than adopt a wise suggestion of another it only remains now added he to educate don henry philip de guzman for by that name i intend him to be known in the world till the time arrives when he may aspire to higher dignities you my dear santillane i have chosen to superintend his conduct i have full confidence in your talents and friendship to regulate his household direct his studies and make him an accomplished gentleman i would willingly have declined the office as never having exercised the craft of a pedagogue which required much more genius and solidity than mine but he 
shut my mouth by saying it was his absolute determination that i should be tutor to this adopted son whom he designed for the first offices of the monarchy as a bribe for my compliance his lordship increased my little income with a pension of a thousand crowns on the commandery of mambra End of book twelve chapter four